So uh, for the past couple hours here, I've been testing different components and I wanted to bring folks in and show you what we've been up to. Uh, but first of all, it's always kind of fun to find what gets left in PCMCIA slots. This is a uh, 56K modem and I love the date on there, 103001, so 2001. Now this is useless to us because the dongle is missing. That was the joy of PCMCIA back in the day. Something else that we've done is I noticed that the battery was really brittle. So I tore it apart and got rid of it. I did save the logic board. There may be an opportunity for me to rebuild a battery based upon it. I don't know if that's gonna be the case given how corroded it is, but we've got basically a positive, sorry, a positive and a negative lead and a thermistor. Uh, that is on this particular logic board and a lot of corrosion. So again, I don't know if we'll be able to use it, but we saved it. And I also spent a little bit of time diagnosing the floppy drive. And it just so happens that, yeah, this floppy drive does not work. However, if we take it apart, we'll notice something. And these are pretty easy to get apart. And what we'll notice is that the drive inside of here is actually a pretty common floppy drive. So basically three screws there, four screws holding it into the assembly, and it comes apart. And what we have on the back here, if I can get it out of the case, what we have on the back here is an adapter to adapt, adapt this particular floppy manufacturer to the compact multi-bay. And if we pull the drive out, lo and behold, it's an Epson SMD 1100, of which can be had on eBay for about 10 or $15. So for that cheap, we can actually replace it. The real key critical part is this adapter right here, and without it, you're toast. I know the adapter works because I hear the drive trying to seek. So that's what we're gonna plan to do here. And then from there, we can just slide a new drive in and we'll be done. And what I have found is in taking these enclosures apart, that there's typically two or three different brands of drives. Typically you have the Epsons, if you're lucky. Sometimes you'll have a TAC. And I want to say there's a third manufacturer that's a little bit harder to find that I can't recall right now. And I have ran into those as well. All right, I'll move that over here. All right, so other things that we've been testing are displays. And we had one display that was cracked, so I pretty much binned it. But I did save the shell, as well as the uh, voltage line, I guess, is what this is for power and the display uh, adapter for actually uh, passing display signal. That's what this is here, along with a couple of ground wires. Oh, look at this. And we still have a remnant here of one screw that's still attached to what was a standoff, which was totally broken and busted. So everything else gets thrown away, but we can at least keep this for the future, if anything, for the hinges. I did have hinges that were loose on a couple of these, and I thought the hinges were bad. They were just loose, tightening up the screws on it fixed it. So that's display one. We can't really do much testing with it. There's nothing here to test. Let's move on and test the next display. And here it is. This is one from a 5300, one of the three machines. So we'll go ahead and hook that in like so. Hook in the uh, logic here for power and also the logic connection. And what I found in, in, in taking some of these apart and testing is that there was a bad LCD inverter in at least one of these displays. And I have since taken that and thrown that away. And as folks may recall from before, this is the fun part. And actually it's typically easier to do this without the display in there. I've probably taken this out 10, 15 times off camera, but when it comes to be on camera time, of course, it's difficult. All right, that's nice and seated. So it would appear. All right, let's test it out. This is speaker connection. I'm not gonna hook that in. Yeah, so this particular display, um, 
we're getting um, some degree of light, so that's good. But other than that, there's really nothing to see. So I think this display is just bad. I did try replacing the inverter. I tried swapping out the, uh, the uh, control cable as well and nothing. So we're gonna set it aside, but it's no good. That said, one thing I did wanna point out from the other display is I actually did save the backlight. So when I tore that other display apart, I saved the backlight and that may come in useful in the future. So we're gonna set this aside. Not much we can do with this either. Okay, now we have another one to test. And that's this one here. And this is off of the other 5280. So let's go ahead and hook him up. See what we can find. Plugged in. Power. Let's fire it up. That's kind of crooked, isn't it? It'll work. Ah! So this one has obviously sustained some damage, maybe even in transit, and as such has failed in a catastrophic way. We might see something appear on it, though I'm not too optimistic. You can see where it took a big hit here. So, machine's booting, you can hear the floppy drive running and the like, but yeah, we're not gonna see much on this display, unfortunately. So, this one too, we can set aside. It's unfortunate that all three of these machines had bad displays, but that's the way it goes. At least I got, on some cases, some hinges that I can use on other machines. We'll set that aside. Okay, so next up what I want to test is, uh, let's test some of the processor cards. So, since we last filmed, I had set up that whole machine, had a sound card working, the machine was running, I was booting from a disk, and then it shut off and died. <laughs> And I traced that down to actually be what I believe to be a bad DC inverter card. I have two bad DC inverter cards now. So we have two DC inverter cards and two processor cards. It would be kind of good just to triple check and make sure that indeed they are no good. So let's go ahead and do some disassembly here. First thing we have to do is pop out all the accessories like the battery, floppy drive, and the hard drive. Hard drives on these are always hard to get out for some reason. All right. Then from there, we can go ahead and take the keyboard apart. Now we have a keyboard off. All right. So next, if we want to get to the processor card, we have to take off this little LCD which actually plugs into the processor card. I'll take him out. Take that out. Take this off. And next thing we have to take off is this shield right here. Now if it goes. Oh yes. If we're gonna be messing with the processor card, I'll also have to take the memory module out. And luckily, I haven't screwed that back in yet. Piece of cake. All right, now we're at a point where we can get to the processor card, so we have to take out two screws, this one and this one. I think we're gonna use the grabber to grab that guy. And this one here. And with that, processor card uh, has one ground connection, but we'll take the card out first. Just kind of rock it a little bit. Comes right out. And then we can disconnect the ground. Okay, we know this is a good card. Put it over there. Let's try this one. I think these are all Pentium 120s. One of them might be a 133. Uh, all right, so first we gotta hook the ground in and it is a pain. What I do typically there is I get it in there and then I use a screwdriver to push it in. Ground is in. Processor card is in. 
and we can just hook up this for now. We can hook the display back in if we want. Okay. Wow, it's a lot easier to do with all these other components out. Let's see here, power up. Yeah, it's a good sign. Maybe. Ooh. Yeah, I don't know about that. That's just kind of staying all lit up, isn't it? I think we might have a bad processor card. All right. Off comes the screen. Off comes this. Make sure we have him seated in there good. He's seated in good. Yep. So I think this card is bad. Let's set it off to the side. Let's test our other card. And it goes. Well, I usually have a rule. If something is bad, we'll test it again just to make sure. I hate to throw things out. Okay. I'm going to put that ground in. As I noted, it is a pain. Okay, and it goes. Good and seated. Video cable, video uh, in. Video power cable. Video signal cable. All hooked in. All right. Give it a whirl. I didn't hook in the LCD, but that's okay. Okay, so that one's decent. Great. Let's go ahead and disconnect this. Let's take this. I'd really like to know the speed of this card, though, before we get too far along, actually. So let's power it up. 120 megahertz. Okay. I guess I could have looked up the part number as well. That doesn't surprise me. I think that both of the 5280s had good cards. And actually, I think that the 5300 uh, has a 133 megahertz card. So this one's good. Let's put a little G on it. And we'll set it aside. All right, one more test on that bad one. All hooked in. Triple check, because once again, this is a bad card, so I'm paranoid thinking, is it really bad? Or did Chris just hook it in wrong? Power for the display. Signal for the display, power for the computer, let's fire it up. Ooh! Well, maybe I didn't have it hooked in right last time, or pushed in uh, firm enough. Because it looks like this time we get, we're getting started juppage. Hmm. Okay. Well, good. That's why you always test twice. 120 megahertz. Okay. Well, there you have it. How about that? All right. So we're going to mark that one good as well. Okay, so now that we know that's good, let's test out these other DC inverters. And we know that the one that's in here is good. So let's put a little G on it so we don't get confused here. Make sure power is disconnected. DC inverter, one screw, that's it. Out it comes. Okay, there's our good inverter. I'll set it over here. I think this is a bad inverter. Put that in. A good processor card. Now that we know. And you might have seen, I already actually marked this inverter as bad. But going with the old philosophy of 
Test more than once. That's what we're going to do, guys. Okay. That's in. Make sure we seat it good. I think that's already bitten us once. Display. You know, for this one, it would actually be helpful to have the LCD as well. So let's hook that in. Because I think we've seen with bad DC inverters that it immediately lights up the LCD. Okay. Power. What do you see, folks? Nothing. Yeah. That inverter died on me earlier today. All righty. So unquestionably bad. Now somebody may have the smarts to recap it. So we'll keep it, but it's bad. Put that aside. Here's the next one that I suspect is bad. Let's put it in. All right, good and connected. Let's put the processor board in. Okay. We'll leave that up there because it's handy. That's fine. All right, let's put the screen on. Everything's all connected, right? We're grounded because I cheated. <laughs> okay, let's give ourselves some display power. Let's give ourselves some display signal. Let's plug it in and see what we get, guys. All lights. And that's what we saw before. So that one is also bad. All right. I think next we can test some keyboards. Let's do it. So if we're gonna test a keyboard, it's kind of helpful, eh, but not required that we boot into an operating system. We can actually do it from the BIOS level as well. So let's test the Cheese Master 2000. Isn't that a nice shade of orange? I mean, we want this keyboard to work. This may be a, a good subject for a future video on retrobriting. Because this thing could definitely use it. So we're going to hook in the keyboard signal cable. And we're going to hook in the mouse. A pointer, I guess it is. Call it as you wish. Okay. I don't care about the microphone. The microphone works great. All right, that should be enough. It's not easy being cheesy. It's actually got for the cheese for such a cheesy keyboard. This little pointing nub is actually looking pretty good. All right, that's a good sign. Okay, looks like we have at least working. Uh, mouse and we have a working several working keys here, so that's good Now I'm not doing a full test of the whole keyboard every single key, but that's okay for now. I, I'm happy okay, Next up we have this keyboard and I can tell you it sustained some damage There's a little ejector that goes here and it's broken off. I think it got hit on this side and Other than that and also this is loose for some reason. So I think that this keyboard at least physically it sustained some damage, but let's see if it works logically. Let's power it up. Once again, I'm not testing the microphone. I don't really care about the microphone. F10 to get us into setup. This one is what we'll call Cheese Master Junior. All right, so looks like we've got mouse. Looks like we've got at least some of the keys working. We're not testing them all, but I'm happy. Great. All right. So what's left to test at this point? Two motherboards. <laughs> and one of them we already tested, and we know that it works to a degree, no sound. I think that the other motherboard is dead. But we can test it. Now, in order to do a valid motherboard test, we're going to need couple of things. I need a processor card. 
So let's go ahead and we haven't screwed that back in, so we can go ahead and pull that out. And we can pull that out there. And we're also going to need a, an inverter card since we have three machines and one good inverter. That's it. All right, so there's our inverter. We're gonna set this aside. Okay. I believe that this is the one we were using earlier that had bad sound, but we're here, let's test it. So we'll take the inverter, put it on there, processor card, hook in the ground wire, Isn't it nice how modular they made these? All right, ground wires in. Hook that in. Ooh, come on. There we go. Nice and in, inverters in, display. Hook in the power. Hook in the signal. Power it up. So we know we at least made it that far and we made it that far before. So that's good. We'll call that success. All right, so only one more thing to test. And that would be the other motherboard. So let's grab our processor card. Let's grab our inverter card. Set this aside. Actually, this can go into the good pile, so we can put this. Well, this is kind of good. We'll put it down here for now. That's the kind of good pile. And here we have the 5300 and its motherboard. What's left component wise in here? The casing and the motherboard. And this is all one piece. So I think that if this fails, this goes in the bin. But Let's not count our chickens before they hatch here. So, in goes an inverter. In goes a processor card. First, we gotta connect the ground cable. Put in the processor board. This here. Connected, 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 connected. In we go. Let's give ourselves some power. Give ourselves some signal. Let's give ourselves some machine power. Power it up. Hmm, interesting. So we got a green light, we have this, but nothing else. And I think that means we've got a bad motherboard because this stays all lit up like this and that's, that light stays lit up. So. One more try. Now we're getting different behavior than I originally got with this machine where an initial power on of all lights on plug-in, which is usually, it could be a bad DC inverter or a bad processor. But I think that we got a problem here because we're not getting any further. Okay. Well, one last college try here. And what we're gonna do Let's take the motherboard completely out of the case. All right. So we'll start with this standoff here. There it is. And then we'll start pulling these screws out in the back. Actually, these don't need to come out. But these do. And these are a pain to get out. <laughs> this is a docking station port cover right here, or, or a connector. And once you get these a little bit loose, then they come out the rest of the way, but there's just not a lot of clearance in putting the tool in on that side. This side I think is not so bad, but that other side, oh, is it a pain. All right. I think with that, unless we missed any screws, oh, there's one more, right here. Mm. 
That looks like one for the grabber, doesn't it? All right. I think with that, the motherboard should come out. Unless there's another screw somewhere. Now it's a little bit tricky to get out. You kind of have to pop out up here. And then from there, it pulls out. So there it is, the motherboard. And as you can see, it's all one component. I think that this may actually come off of here, this, this cage here, but that doesn't do much for you logically now, does it? So that's the motherboard. There she is. And what I kind of like to do, there's your sound control there, kind of cute. What I kind of like to do just because I'm an optimist is I'll take this out, I'll look around. There's no foreign objects in here or debris, so that's not our problem. We had some battery corrosion, that's for sure. You can see where the battery corrosion hit us. Um, but yeah, we can put it back in. Just give a little push. There we go. Now we're good. See? What you have to, the key thing you have to do here is not be a big sissy like I was, and then you would be fine. All right. A little bit of percussive maintenance here. Looks like everything snapped in the back. I am not going to bother to reconnect that. I will put the grounding screw in, or the one screw in here, since it kind of is serves the purpose of a ground. Um, and we don't want to totally cook everything. So we'll put that back in. Just in case this guy does something with grounding as well, we'll put him in. Yeah, you can kind of see him push the motherboard back down to the ground. Okay, what's up next? The inverter card goes in, yeah? If I forgot something, you guys are probably screaming at the video right now. I think this goes in. Oh, I didn't bother to put the uh, grounding cable in. It's okay. Get a little better after about the 10th time you take this apart. Okay, we've got all of our pieces. And get our display. Are we missing anything? I don't think so. And we've got our signal. Okay, and then we've got our power. Got that. Okay, so I think we've got enough stuff hooked back up again. Oh, hey, the sticker fell. I want to make sure that's good. That sticker's got to stay on there. All right. I think we got enough stuff hooked in. Let's power it up. Ooh. Little different behavior. We don't have a green light anymore. Interesting. Oh, I finally saw the green light pop on when I pulled the plug out. Did you see that? Hmm. Hey, flashing green light. Steady green light. Well, guys, let's not tempt the fates. <laughs> it's no good. All right. Well, the only thing I have left to do now is assemble the good machine and then we'll be all set. But I think that we've pretty much tested everything at this point, so. There you have it. All right, now that we've torn down all the machines, inventoried all the parts, there's only one thing left to do, and that is use some of the parts that we got from the machines that don't work and put them into some machines that do. So we're very grateful for the two machines that are donating parts here. And what we have is two 64 megabyte memory modules. And we're going to install these into my LTE 5000 and one of my LTE 5380s. So let's do it. And with this, all of my machines that are operational have maximum memory. So we're just gonna undo this here, pull that out. It's hoping that one would come out on its own, but not quite. So we can take that, pop this out. And that one there is a 32 megabyte module. And this one here is a 64. And we'll put the screws in later. That'll be our exercise, but we can at least power this on. And we'll see that pop up. 
to six to 70 megabytes because it has eight megabytes on board or 72, I think. There we go, 72 megabytes, perfect. And what I'll probably do later is run mem tests just to make sure that the memory is good, but I don't suspect that there's any issue. All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing here for this one. And we'll bump it up as well. Now we should be all set. That's a little better. All righty, that's all for now. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, feel free to give it a thumbs up. Otherwise, feel free to give it a thumbs down, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.